Excellent. Welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is ZX. I'm a uh, lead crypto econ lab at PL. Super, super excited to be here. And thank you, everyone, for coming. It's so great to see all of us um, after the pandemic in person again. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Do I have? Thank you. Let's see. Uh, it's not updating. All right, so let's, here's the agenda for, for my talk. So we, for, let's start with like Crypto Econ Lab. Uh, we're gonna introduce what's our vision, what's our culture. And then I just wanna touch on what is Filecoin. I think many speakers today have talked a lot about what is Filecoin. I'm gonna give you my definition, and hopefully that would um, open door to more, many more uh, different applications and new ideas that you wanna build on the Filecoin ecosystem. And then I'll introduce what are the Crypto Econ challenges and opportunities, and we'll talk about Crypto Econ Lab a lot, right? What do we exactly work on, right? So, uh, we try to break it down for you guys. So these are the two main, uh, two main topics that we, two main uh, areas of work that our lab works on. And then after that, um, another advertisement. We're hosting a full day event, a half day event tomorrow, a Crypto Econ Day at the Line Hotel. Uh, join us. I think today is just pretty much a very brief introduction. Most of our teams will be there tomorrow to kind of present the different kinds of work that we are doing. So let's get started. So Crypto Econ Lab and even the whole network that we are building, we are envisioning to be the industry-defining lab that in a leader in this design, validation, deployment, and governance of crypto economic systems. So our vision really is to build this end-to-end R&D lab that really covers from fundamental research. So how do you engineer incentive in a decentralized setting to um, different kinds of new protocol, new incentive, uh, new protocol that's up, up, up and coming that start from like cryptography or distributed system research, right? And then we also spend lots of time in like making sure we have the Falcon economy is doing well, understanding what's going on, analytics, and then put, put, and people propose any changes. What are the different like spectrum of impact? What are the different kind of consequences uh, that a change might, might, might produce? And then lastly, we firmly believe that ecosystem and the success of ecosystem uh, is an extension of the economics, right? So we actually participate pretty actively in our ecosystem, like building new projects, building new applications, really define what this economy can do, right? So our, we take pride really in being this like honest, transparent, uh, nobody really knows the future, so we try to be very first principle, execution, oriented, and entrepreneurial team culture. So you can think of it as like Crypto Econ Lab being at the center, right? We have the different kinds of group that we work with, university, research labs, and then downstream, we participate really actively in the ecosystem with many startups uh, and different teams. And so what is Falcon, right? So we talk a lot about Falcon. I think like a predominant pitch potentially uh, would be it's a storage network, right? But I think we want to push the envelope, right? I think sometimes to define what it is might also be limiting the potential. So we think of it from a very abstract sense of what is the Falcon economy and what are we doing, right? So um, I, I, my, my argument is, is well, with the launch of Falcon, I think the whole Web3 enters into a new era because like, it's something so different and something it's kind of like so different from all the previous generation of blockchains, right? It's, Beyond just being a storage network, we also think it's a layer one protocol. Expect that it will be especially true uh, when FVM comes online, right? Storage is just the beginning, data is just the beginning. Once you have that, you can create many more um, application and protocol on top of it. And it's also a multi-sided marketplace that is enabled by a blockchain, which is pretty, uh, which is from, um, I've been in this space for a while, that's pretty much like the first blockchain that actually does that, right? It's also a blockchain with a mission, with a utility. It's not just about we are just processing some transaction, but we also, cares about, we also care about what's going on in this economy, right? Uh, not, uh, it's also an island economy. We have many different participants, right? Today, it's like a carnival for our island, so welcome. And uh, we have like different participant researchers, developers, entrepreneurs, uh, storage providers. Um, people are kind of coming together, producing these valuable resources called decentralized storage, and, then, and all the value added services that we can add on top of that, right? And then our goal as an ecosystem so is to bring in more people to join our island and then like kind of like build this economy together. Another very common analogy is um, Airbnb for cloud services, where right? like uh, we have another slide later to talk about that. And most importantly, it's a, it's a passionate and very talented research product engineering community. So these are the main, uh, the core play, uh, kind of like stakeholders on the protocol level, right? So you have like um, storage provider um, proving, providing reliable and useful storage. A lot of the crypto econ incentive on the protocol lev uh, uh, layer focus on these two elements, right? The reason is, the main reason rather is, um, the main reason for um, reliable and usefulness really is that there are many other things that we would like to incentivize, but when you're building a crypto economic system, you're really uh, your hands are a bit tied uh, by the underlying cryptography, right? So um, there's some other stuff that we could incentivize as well in a decentralized setting, but those stuff are much harder to prove. 
right? Client today, they store data on Filecoin, but they can do a lot more with, uh, with EVM smart contract on Filecoin, right? And then um, also calling, uh, just calling out, I think like cost is a given on Filecoin, right? It's sub subsidized by the protocol, it's cheap, but I feel like as a community, we shouldn't compete on cheap, right? If clients want to pay, let them be, right? How can we build more, more and better experiences such that people pay for this experience, right? So it's just like think of Airbnb when they compete with hotel chains, it's no longer just about price, it's also about that unique experience. So I really encourage all the developers, entrepreneurs joining our ecosystem and building all this amazing experience on top of the raw materials, right? And then you have token holders uh, staking Filecoin to facilitate more storage onboarding, and then you have ecosystem partner um, creating new initiative to jumpstart the ecosystem. So here's a comparison, right? Like an Airbnb, uh, becoming a Filecoin storage provider is a lot like an Airbnb host, right? You uh, contribute your resources, you earn some kind of income, but the differences are, right, you come, um, you are like an owner of the network by being a Filecoin story provider because you earn the token of the system, right? Like instead of just being a contractor. And the other similarity uh, is you have initial pledge uh, is required, just like you need to acquire homes for you to become an uh, Airbnb host, right? But there are many other services also emerging on our system. It may not be, it, there could be like provider that provide a capital and then the storage provider just operating the capital, right? Um, but similarly, for both Airbnb hosts and Falcon SPs, we're also competing on this kind of differentiated services, competing on the brand. But then we also share this common identity of being in the Falcon network. And uh, Falcon is a storage network, so we also um, could make some comparison with like all the other storage networks out there. I think it's a bit small on the screen. Let me just read it out. We are about one and a half year in. I think Falcon as a storage network is like 10% of AWS today which is like amazing, it's a huge milestone. I think people have never achieved that beyond like our ecosystem, right? So we should feel very proud of that and there are many other milestones and challenges ahead of us too. Uh, and then when we compare with all the other Web3 ecosystem, I think like the numbers are pretty clear, like it's predominant, the leader in the Web3, um, Web3 cloud space. But our vision is not Web3, right? It's about how can we build something even bigger, something greater that we can, um, our real kind of like target and real, um, kind of competitor could just be AWS, right? How can we deliver internet scale experience in a decentralized, verifiable setting? And uh, Falcon, as I mentioned, is a layer one, so it's, we have a very similar mechanism as uh, Ethereum's gas model, so it's a uh, variant of EIP-1559. So this is like the gas uh, burning on Falcon and network fee. At some point, we saw about 200K of, 200,000 of Falcon um, getting, removing from, uh, getting removed from the circulating supply. Um, and so it's an island economy. We have um, 4,000 storage providers and like 10,000 developers building in our ecosystem. And these are the different charts that our ecosystem have, ecosystem have built uh, to kind of show us the progress. And then with LVM coming online, as I mentioned earlier, there's, what is Filecoin? Such a multifaceted question. There are many, many layers. And then with FVM coming online, all the programmability that people are introducing through FIP, there's just a lot more that we can do. Um, so, well, I went through many definitions of what Filecoin could be. Could be a layer one, could be Airbnb. Pick whatever that works for you, right? Like, as long as we make the vision come true. I think that's the beauty of Web3 and protocol, right? Like, there's no, there's no predefined what this thing should be. It's always evolving, it's ever evolving all the time. And then we are the kind of the driver in this ecosystem to really evolve this economy, right? And I get this question a lot, right? Where is the future of Web3? The real answer is nobody knows, but the future is up to us to define and build. So the next phase, I'll just cover very briefly, like um, when we say crypto econ lab, crypto econ, what do you guys really work on, right? So, and then I think tomorrow at our, our event tomorrow, uh, we cover in greater detail each of these elements. So uh, we're kind of breaking it up into like two big parts. One part, the big part is like data-driven governance of the layer uh, one protocol, right? Which is Filecoin, right? Then the other piece is how can we build more novel business and application on Filecoin as layer two? How can we really uh, push the ecosystem forward? So, um, data, so we kind of, then we kind of set further separate that into like different um, aspects, right? You have like the analytics and model, uh, monitoring. We need to know, we have a governing a system, we need to know, okay, what's going on, right? Like, and it's not, when I say governing, doesn't mean that we are making a decision. Our position really is we want to be that uh, kind of like a trusted source of what's going on, right? Like we are kind of, we are stewards of the economy, right? Can we provide the right monitoring tools, the right analytics, such that the community, which is you guys, can make a more informed decision, right? Um, but, some, and then the next phase is, uh, how we, let's say somebody proposed some changes, there's some, something happening in the world, we need to make some proposals. How can we model and simulate so that we have a bit more confidence of what the changes that we are introducing to the system? 
And then you go through the FIP, uh, which is the Filecoin Improvement Protocol. I think there are many talks in this conference today that talk about governance. Uh, we will not touch too much into that. But the real, ans the real answer is this, right? Nobody really knows uh, where the future would be, right? What we can do is we can model the dynamic, model the forces such that we can have a better understanding of what the trajectory like, uh, will likely to be, right? And then, like, it also depends on many assumptions. It's all kind of like our, um, uh, what, whatever you want to call it, requirement, mandate, vision to try to, like, democratize and make sure everybody understands what is the assumption that we put into the model, right? And it's an iterative process, lots of feedback loop. You see many of our work being published on the FIP discussions. And there are many dimensions to data as well, right? It's, Filecoin is a complex economy. I will show you a slide. I just found out about it pretty recently, too. And it's really, it's a new, uh, whatever we're doing here, we're kind of building like a new frontier in Web3 governance and, and network eco economics because we're doing something that nobody has really done in Web3 or in non-Web3 setting, even though we are applying many of the traditional optimization, finance, apply math, statistic concept um, in, into our work, in our work. So I'm just going through some example analytics, right? You have the network help on a whole macro network layer. Then you also have all the different like um, block explorer looking at the blockchain layer, right? Then you have like the minor reputation system looking at it from like a more macro service level kind of uh, layer. So, and then you also have like um, transaction flow and anal analytics, Falcon plus flow. So really there's a, it's a, there's a multi-dimension of like, uh, there's a huge dimension of data within the Filecoin ecosystem which makes our, our, job, our governance job rather difficult. Uh, but having said that, uh, we do believe like a good analytic is a good basis to governance. So we, our lab invests lots of time in our network and lots of time and energy in building all these analytics and making sure we know what's going on. Here's another example. Like, um, I just found out about this like uh, two days ago I was making the slides, right? This is an API of all the available data that people aggregate from the chain and they put in open API. So you have like at least like four categories of data of what's happening in the Filecoin network, right? You have like capacity and your storage services, you have your markets and deals, you have your transaction and usage patterns, and then you have your supply metrics, right? Like what is the inflow, what is the outflow? So these are the flavors of things that we look at as a network. Um, then we go to like modeling and simulation. So it's very common for people coming to our lab asking, hey, what do you guys feel about this? And hey, can we make this change over here, right? So then we, we kind of develop this kind of crypto econ uh, governance process that we talk about in a moment, but we have all our ad, uh, ad analysis public on Notion. You can check it out. And then like an example of this would be like we model the different dynamics, the different decision variables uh, of the agents. And then we run simulation to understand what is the band of uncertainty and uh, where things might, uh, might go, right? Again, we don't claim that we know how things would evolve, but we try to do our best uh, work in understanding what are different dynamics and what are different assumptions. Um, and then next would be whatever analytics, we, we monitor and then we make model, we simulate, now we want to propose a change to the Filecoin network, right? So we go through the Filecoin improvement protocol, or we call FIP, right? Anyone can propose a FIP, uh, but then sometimes like a seemingly innocent FIP, like, oh, I want to optimize the software may carry some economic impact, right? Because it's like token everywhere, right? So, and then our team might get called in to kind of understand what is the impact surface. So we develop this kind of uh, evaluation process. So you first do like a smell test. Mm, do we like the smell of this? Is it better for, for the ecosystem? Is it better for just one group or for everyone in the ecosystem, right? And then we try to analyze what is the impact surface, right? Like um, in the Silicon Valley culture, move fast, break thing, but like, that's not how it works in like an in, in like a evolving economy. We 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 really feel the responsibility as a lab of making sure we understand what are the changes that we are introducing to the Filecoin network, right? So understand what's impact surface. Um, what are you changing? Are you changing everything? Are you changing just a small part, right? And then we move on to analytical analysis. We build a model about it. We try to get some intuition. What are the forces at play here, and so on. And then if it's really uh, positive, then we move on to like, oh, we build a whole model. And then we actually potentially uh, write some simulation, understand what is the short-term, medium-term, and long-term impact, and to different stakeholder groups. And there's no right or wrong answer, to be honest. And uh, it's um, and and let's say we have like a we we introduce a change um, at the point in time we think it's a very good outcome, but circumstances might change down the line, right? That requires us as community uh, getting together and making all these like um, changes and adjustments even after we introduce a change. And then the next part would just be where I'm going through that very briefly, right? I think Filecoin is a flowing economy. There are many businesses, many applications are being built. I'm just going to highlight some areas, right? Like competitive lending markets, many of us are here today, and even like new 
uh, lending markets are popping up, and then like, emerging data marketplaces, quite a few of us are giving talks at this conference of what, as well. Um, then you also have data retrieval networks. I think Patrick over here is giving another talk and, um, on, on all the exciting work that's happening in this, like, in this dimension. Um, and then FEM is coming online, right? There'll be many more novel applications. But we also work with many startups in our ecosystem as a lab. I think like um, one thing that we kind of observe um, with many of the startups really is like Filecoin as an economy is providing many unique econ uh, crypto econ incentives and characteristics, right? How can we really tap into many of those on the core protocol, protocol layer to find product market fit, to find validation, and then we can, um, and then we can achieve the long-term vision that we all want to achieve, right? It's very common to see companies building on raising on the vision, but then they just couldn't really get from reality to the vision. So um, with the launch of FEM and many of the builders in our ecosystem and a deeper understanding of the token economics, I believe we can build much better application, much better protocol on top of Filecoin. Um, so Crypto Econ Day, right? I think I kind of like gloss over many of this topic. I think many of them deserve a double click and maybe we can spend like a whole day talking about all these things. So that's why we're hosting a whole day to talk about all these things. So we talk, we'll talk about them tomorrow, um, start from like, it'll be me again introdu introducing it, and then we talk about circulating supply, validation of the on-chain data. Uh, then we talk about um, analytics and a different model, gas model. Uh, let's say like Falcon can scale a 1,000x tomorrow. What will our gas model be? So these are some of the longer term questions that our research team thinks about. And then in the afternoon, we talk about all the different new applications that people are building on our ecosystem. Um, I think it'll be an exciting day of lots of like research, product, uh, thinking about big picture, thinking about all the nitty gritty of the details in, in the model. So I think it'll be a great day. So welcome all of you to register and then join us tomorrow. And with that, feel free to reach out and uh, I'll be here today. And uh, if you have any, any new ideas, any questions that you have about the Filecoin economy, uh, come talk to us. Thank you.